to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your host, Davo. We are fresh off the fight for the Furby. Andy, as keeper of the Furby, how are you doing? I'm doing good. This is great. Kells, as holder of the jacket from the Brain Masters Tournament, how you doing? I think that's more of like wearer of the jacket, and I am surprisingly warm. <laughs> and Neil, how you doing? I am doing great. Well, why don't you hit, take it away? Okay. Each week we have a theme, and in that theme we've got six categories with four questions each. Each question is worth ten points, maybe a few bonus points thrown in here and there, and then a final question which is worth up to one hundred points. And today's theme is. Something I don't know because I'm not doing the questions today. I actually get to play the game. <laughs> what? And it, it's up to Mr. Andy to let us know what the theme is and to give us some interesting trivia questions. I am honored to be the MC for our Christmas episode. And I just want to wish, wish everybody out there Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas, you beautiful old savings and loan. Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. Uh, I mean, Sensei, sorry. Um, got carried away there. <laughs> so um, <laughs> now let's look under the tree. I've got Christmas presents for everybody. Let me uh, find the first present here. Oh, it looks like it's for Devo. Oh Let's man, see what we got here. Open it up. Oh boy. What is happening? Robin. The present hey. is Robin questions. Hey, Robin questions. All right. You ready? Ooh. I'm ready. <laughs> Wait, do we all have to answer these? Or are these yeah. just for Devo? Oh, okay. No. That's how the game works. <clears throat> this Robin teamed up with his older brother and his fraternal twin to make the 1977 soundtrack one of the biggest selling albums of all time. Name the band and the soundtrack. I like that. Uh, <laughs> is this part... Can we partial partial credit for this? Or Absolutely. Okay. I am locked in. So we'll start with uh, Neil. So I believe his brother is Andy and they're in the Bee Gees and Mm -hmm. it's about the right time for Saturday Night Fever. Okay, Kells. I also went with the Bee Gees (laughs) and it'd have to be Saturday Night Fever. And Devo. Bee Gees and Saturday Night Fever. Well done. All right. We're off to a good start. Yay. Number two, leaving the shadow of Batman, Robin moved to what city? Locked in. <laughs> uh, no. I... All right, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, we'll start with Davo since he locked in first. I believe it's Bloodhaven. Yeah. Kells? I could not think of that to save my life, so I just wrote down an, another DC city. I said uh, Central City. And Neil? So I was thinking of a completely different Robin from How I Met Your Mother, who I believe moved to Japan, so I answered <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> It is blood heaven, haven. Yay. And I was curious because it's actually spelled B L U D H A V N. Yeah. So I was curious to see how it was pronounced. There's an umlaut over the, oh, over the U. I don't have the umlaut. Yeah. yeah there's okay. an umlaut there. Question three What three states is the robin the state bird? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh hell. <laughs> We get points for uh, if we get one, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, the state bird for Arkansas is the cardinal. 
So Arkansas is not one of them. Okay, 49 no. more to go. 49 to go. Just helping out a little bit. Way to eliminate, though. I appreciate that. I, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is real bad, man. What's uh, interesting to me is the stony silence from uh, Neil. That's so why he's the sensei. Yeah, he's he's working focused. it out over there. Hyper focused over there. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm locked in. Well, he's trimming that bonsai tree while he's while he's cogitating <laughs> over there, like a Bond villain. Yeah. I thought I heard him catch a fly with chopsticks, but I wasn't sure if that was the sound. Or <laughs> I sure do have three states written down. Oh, so do I. So we're all locked oh, in. Oh, no, I'm not locked in. No. But since so I, how, still thinking. How, how is this working? If we were going to give you three, we need all three of them to get points? No, no, no. You? I'll give you uh, partial points depending. I'm going to let you, as a scorekeeper, figure out the partial points. Because I know it's, it's not an even number, but you like science, so... Good luck. Uh, if it was me, I would say I would give four points for each right, right answer. Fair enough. Okay, I'm locked in. Kells, what did you get? Yeah. Um, I wrote down Illinois, Nebraska, and Nevada. Neil, I I was trying a whole bunch of different things to come up with an answer. I was trying to think of NCAA teams that were the Robins, and I couldn't come up with any. No, no pro teams. And so then I just figured that they were kind of a northern bird, usually, I think, although they're mm-hmm. all over the place. But so anyway, I clustered my my states to uh, Pennsylvania, New York and Connecticut. Oh. And Devo. I said Missouri, Kansas and Iowa. Wow. Almost a sweep. Michigan, Wisconsin and Connecticut. Mm. <laughs> Neil, <laughs> well done, Neil. I mean, wow. we each we each had a a bad chance of getting one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question four: What famous author gave Arkham Asylum its name? Locked in. Yeah, figured that. You're the best. <laughs> Locked in. Devo. H.P. Lovecraft. Neil. Mr. Lovecraft. And Kells. Well, when Devo said it so fast and then thanked you for it, I guessed it had to be Lovecraft. So I wrote Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Devo, what year and what issue? Oh, good Lord. Uh, they mentioned when do they mention Arkham Asylum? It's pretty early because Hugo. I think Hugo Strange is in there. I'm not sure which one is it. It's 1974, uh, issue 258, uh, by Dennis O'Neill. It was actually originally Arkham Hospital. It wasn't changed oh. to Arkham Asylum until 1979. Oh wow, cool! Denny O'Neill did a lot of good stuff for Batman. So, Sensei, what is our score after our first category of Robin? Kells has 20 points, Neil has 24 points, and Devo has 30. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's see what I can find under the tree next. Oh, this is a big present. Let's see what we got here. Well, who's it for? It's for Neil. Science. Oh. <laughs> I like science. So okay. I'm told. Question one. What is the largest desert on Earth? Locked in. Yeah. Largest. Um, I'm locked in. I am locked in as well. Okay, Neil? Antarctica. Devo. Oh, you 
I went with the Sahara. Kells? I fought my instincts because I heard one time that Antarctica is actually a desert. I wrote down Antarctica. Well, you did on. not. Yeah, I did. I Neil, fought my, ba- I fought my baser the, instincts. What is the average precipitation in Antarctica per year? Do you know? Uh, not off the top of my head, but it's almost done, I think. Two inches. Oh, wow. All right. Question two. What is the first man-made device capable of exceeding the sound barrier? Locked in. Locked in. Uh, I'm locked in, too. (laughs) Devo? See, you got me. You, do you remember just a week ago with the the Furby freebie questions? I blocked the Furby freebie questions because I lay awake at night sometimes <laughs> crying. Well, the thing about those was they were they were very straightforward, but they get mm-hmm. you to question everything you believe in. Mm-hmm. So i i was uh, I said a bullet. <laughs> okay, I said a bullet. Okay. Kells? I, well, I also put the bullet, and then you said you said device, but the bullet actually breaks the sound barrier, not the actual gun. So I, I said bullet, though. Okay. And Neil? I went a slightly different route. Mm-hmm. I put a, a whip. Oh, the crack, the crack of a whip is uh, breaking the sound barrier. It is. Huh. It is indeed. Neil is correct. Yes. That was, oh, man. Damn. I am outclassed in this one. Well, I'm, it I'm, is I'm, science. But you know what, guys? I got your back because question three. Oh, yeah. In what year did, did Nintendo open for business and you're asking is that science and i'm saying yeah it is because i say so i'm locked in wow (laughs) yeah scary (laughs) Um... all right i'm gonna lock in no yeah i'm gonna lock in which leaves us with kells all right, I'm going to lock in. All right, Neil, you locked in pretty quickly. Yeah, it was a very long time ago. Um, I don't know the exact date, but I put down 1890. Devo? I remember it was a very long time ago because they started out, off as a, like, a playing card company. Mm-hmm. And... I went with 1900. And Kells. I said uh, 1885. I'm impressed. All of you are very close. It did indeed start off as a playing card company in 1889. Oh, I didn't get any points. (laughs) What do you mean? You said 1890. I, no, I said 1900. Oh, 1900. Neil said 1890. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I missed points by a year. Oh, that stings. So I think I got nine for that Mm because I was off by one year. Kel was off by four years for six points. (sighs) David was off by 11 years for (laughs) zero points. That Mm. stinks. You, I mean, relatively, you were close. Yeah. I mean, actually, I was genuinely impressed how close all of you were. I just know it was the 1800s. Question four. A study by Walmart showed that in Florida, these two items were in the highest demand prior to a hurricane. What are they? Um, I'm locked in. See, there's a 
a, a passel of items it could be. Mm-hmm. That would make logical sense. Mm-hmm. I'm the like only that. hint I'll give you when you say it makes logical sense, it's Walmart in Florida. See, that's why I'm thinking it's mm-hmm. going to be like, uh, I, I need my copy of Cosmo and some beef jerky. <laughs> well, But I am locked in. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Kells this time. Okay, I went with uh, bottled water and flashlights. See, because Kells is a logical, smart man. Devo. I went with bread and milk. Also, mm. very logical. Neil. Snowstorm. Yeah. Tried to split the difference between logical and Florida <laughs> and chose water and beer. Oh! oh. It is beer and Pop Tarts. <laughs> what? Pop Tarts? <laughs> beer and Pop Tarts. What? Breakfast of Champions. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, so, Merry Christmas. Full disclosure, everybody. I am. I am actually a Floridian. <laughs> oh, oh, see? Oh, yeah, see? At the end of round two, Davo has 30. Neil uh, Kells has 36, and Neil has 58. Jeez. Uh, it's like old times. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I've been here before. <sighs> well, All right, let me... I have a feeling Kells has a present coming Let up. Which get is not under the good. tree. Let me just look under the tree here. There's all sorts of... Oh, wow. Wow. What do we got here? Woo-hoo. That's a big present. All right, it's Kells. And it's Bond. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know if I like this. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see where you go with it. Question one. This name is given to the date at which the point of the principal amount on the bond must be paid back in full or risk default. <laughs> I knew it. I knew he'd find a way to do it to me. Uh, uh, I'm locked in. Yeah. I don't know. I'm locked in. I'm locked in, too. All right, Neil locked in first. What do you got, Neil? It's the maturity date. Cal? Yes! I said due date. Devo? I said the date of maturity. I'll accept that. All right. Question two. So So it is maturity 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 date. date. I'm sorry. It's maturity date, yeah. I'm not I'm not used to being the sensei. It feels weird. It's unnatural. Usually by this time I'm kind of crying off mic. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the most recent Bond movie I've seen had Roger Moore in it. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> this is the most recent. Wow. Yeah. So Moonraker. <laughs> uh, no, I Bond think it was saw. it was probably one of the seventies ones. Yeah, Moonraker. Yeah, Moonraker. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a high it possibility. I, I remember. I remember when I was. He could do worse. That's not bad. I mean, I don't know that I ever saw Moonraker, but I, I just I don't know what I saw. I think it was the one with uh, <laughs> the guy with the teeth. Moonraker, That's Moonraker isn't it? Well, there's oh, two okay. with him in it, right? Cal. Yeah, yeah he, I think he was in that, and. Um, Will this pop up in the quiz? No. The other movie he was in. Uh, I think it was I think it was View to a Kill. Yes, right. He wasn't in View to a Kill. Yes, he was. He wasn't? No, he was not. It was it was Christopher Walken and Grace Grace Jones. Grace Slick. Grace Jones. Grace Slick. Grace Slick. Which one is it? Not, Grace, Jones. Not no, Grace, Grace Jones. Grace Slick is Jeffrey <laughs> yeah. Airplane. Grace Jones. Yeah, I yeah. always get them mixed up. I know, it's kind of weird. Really? One's I white and one's so like this too, right? <laughs> Y'all just dogpiled me. Just want to know. <laughs> dogpiled me on that. We mean not to hurt cool. your feelers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, let's not fight. It's Christmas. <laughs> okay. Anyway, question two. question two. Question two. 
Ian Fleming initially did not like the idea of Sean Connery as Bond. Instead, he had imagined this actor when he created the character. Well, so, I, I, I'm locked in with what I think it is. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Bevo, you locked in? Yeah, I said David Niven. David Niven. Neil? I'm pretty sure it was Spencer Tracy. And Kells. Uh, Blank. Drew a blank. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite movie of all time is North by Northwest. Cary Grant. If you think about it, Cary Grant really would be the perfect James Bond. Wow. Yeah. He's even British. Yeah. It really works. Always took the stairs. (laughs) (laughs) You guys you guys remember Cary Grant's given name? Oh, this came Uh, up before. It was a a few times. Um I know it was when they Cliff Clavins. It was one of the people. Yeah. In his final, yeah. Oh, I can't remember the name. <laughs> Archibald Leach. Archibald Leach. All right. Question number three. Ian Fleming is the cousin of what actor that played for Francisco Scarmenegin in The Man with the Golden Gun? Locked in. Told you I had your back. Scaramanga. Ah, uh, see, I I was trying to remember how to pronounce that. <laughs> Scaram Scaramengin. Scaramanga. Scaramangan. Oh. Because <laughs> it's spelled S C A R A M A A A N G A N. <laughs> what? Three of those weren't letters. S C A R A M A N G A I N. You sure does that spell? Yes. I'm locked in. All right, Kels, you locked in first. Christopher Lee. Davo. Christopher Lee. Neil. Grace Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been crazy. It would have been good. <laughs> All right. Question four. And oh, the I'm answer sorry. Christopher is, Lee. Of course. Christopher is, Lee. I'm not good at this. This is you're out of practice. This is Neil's job. It's, not, it's fine. And I want you to look up um, Scaramanga after this. Because I'm. You're like I'm, a. I'm willing to bet that you misspelled it. I have gone. You're like the substitute teacher just showing a movie for a few periods. <laughs> just wheeling the TV on the cart. Yeah. It's finals <laughs> week. I don't remember the last time I slept eight hours. All right. Neither do yeah, I. Yeah, I know. That's why I can't complain. Question four. This actor played Carmine in The Godfather. What? Mm-hmm. I'd like my Furby freebie. Nope. I don't think we're doing that anymore. <laughs> Not doing that anymore. Oh. Yeah. He... Uh, I am going to punt because I do not know this at all. Hang time. Mm. Kelvin? Yes. I am going to punt. I was, well. We all knew. I, I think you're supposed to say hang time or something now. Ray Guy. Thank you. Thank you. Neil, when you're not in charge, it all goes to hell yeah, in a hand. This back. is a train wreck. Yeah. I noticed that. <laughs> I don't know who played Carmine. I'm locked in. Neil, did you lock in? I did okay. lock in. So Neil locked in first. 
So uh, the character's full name is uh, Carmine Ragusa, also known as the Big Ragu, played by Eddie Mecca. Kells? Well, once I got Carlo out of my head, who was Connie's husband, I think Carmine was one of the Rosado brothers. Correct. And I don't know who played him, but I remember... Danny Aiello was in this scene. <laughs> so I wrote down Danny Aiello. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Danny Aiello. R.I.P. Carmen Canillo was played by Bond. Rudy Bond. Who? Mm. Is that what? Is that what? Uh, Carmen Canillo? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bond. Did, did anybody get my answer at all, by the way? I'm just curious. No. That's from, I totally um, went over my head. Laverne and Shirley? Oh, yeah. <laughs> big ragu. Big ragu. Thank you, Kels. I'm with you, man. God bless Nick at night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brought me through. Well played, Neil. All hey, right. Andy, don't give me any more gifts, okay? Please no, I won't. <laughs> I won't. Let me look under the tree again. There are more presents here. Well, Hold since- on. Hold while on. you're while you're doing that, while you're doing score. that, let me give you the scores. Oh my gosh! At the end of round three, Kells has forty six, Davo fifty, and Neil sixty eight. Nice. I'm creeping up on you, Neil. Oh. All right, I'm sorry. I'm almost done Scroll opening this Scroll. present here. This is weird. It's an expiration date. Oh, this is a box of Furby freebies. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, how did oh, that happen? Really All right. <laughs> that must be the category you were so proud about. You were talking really, about, yeah. huh? Yeah. Question one. In 1965, this Fab Four from Liverpool had a top 10 hit both in the UK and the US with Ferry Across the Mersey. Well, I know what he wants me to put. <laughs> but the thing is, thing is, I can't think of another Fab Four from Liverpool. All right, I'm just going to write down a word. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. He's wrong. Okay, I believe <laughs> wrong. I believe Davo locked in first. I wrote down the kinks. Hmm. Uh, Kells? I took the bait and said Beatles. And Neil? So... I- I pulled this name out of somewhere. I don't know where. First of all, I know the reason I, the only reason I actually really know that song is because uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood covered it in the 80s. Um, but I, I, I'm, I think it was Jerry and the Pacemakers. <sighs> I'm, tired of, I'm tired of playing, man. I'm tired of playing. Neil is Ooh. correct. It is Jerry and the Pacemakers. And doesn't he spell Jerry wrong? Capital G-E-R-R-Y. All right, question two. You got Jerry and the Pacemakers. Fine. Jerry and the Pacemakers are also most remembered for being the first act to reach number one in the UK singles chart with their first three singles. This record would be broken by what Liverpool band? (laughs) <laughs> man he is you know when you try to take it out on him you take it out on this <laughs> yeah jeez this is not we're, fair we're innocent and did nothing you won the tournament right? <laughs> why are you so look what they did to my boy <laughs> I'm locked in I'm locked in. Uh, Yeah, I'm locked in. Neil locked in first. So I I officially, before this uh, this round started, I only knew of one. I only knew one band that I Mm -hmm. knew was from Liverpool, and that was Mm -hmm. the Beatles. So, since uh, the second one was uh, about. Ferry across the Mersey, and the only band I know that covered that song was Frankie Goes to Hollywood. 
I'm going to guess that Frankie Goes to Hollywood is from Liverpool, and they had some big hits, so that's my answer. Devo? That's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I said Oasis. Kells. Beatles. The answer is uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Andy? Seriously. Relax. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> this can't be happening. Good. Yeah, it can. Yeah, it can. Because it is. You, you step to the king, you best not miss. <laughs> oh, Mark. Who coming. knows that? No, Mark. Coming. Neil does. <sighs> Clearly. Okay. Okay. Shake it off. <sighs> Question number three. Only after connecting with manager Brian Epstein and producer George Martin did this Liverpool band hit it big with the 1963 top 10 hit, Do You Want to Know a Secret? I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Uh, I am going to write a word. (laughs) I am locked in. You know what? I'm not starting with Neil. Kells. <laughs> That's because that'll make him wrong. Kells. I was, I'm hoping it's got to be right eventually. I want the Beatles. Devo. Uh, I went with the Pixies just because I wanted to write the Pixies. Neil. <laughs> So the thing about Furby Freebie movies is, or questions is that sometimes the answer is the one that's glaringly obvious. So I went with the Beatles. Not this time. It's Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. Who uh, are these bands that you made? <laughs> <laughs> Question four in the Furby Freebie. Princess Margaret was a giant fan of this Liverpool band. Locked in. Me too. He said defeat. Me too. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. Gals? Princess Margaret. Yeah. Huh? Uh, um, the Beatles. Devo. I'm going to say Oasis. Neil. <laughs> I also said the Beatles. It's the Beatles. Yeah, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was going to go so much better for me. All the vengeance I imagined. And Neil got three out of four. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got you got uh, great vengeance and furious anger upon me. Yeah, and I like you. Yeah, oh, I feel up bad that? now. Hey, I mean, I, I like Neil too. Right. I could take offense Sorry. to that if I cared enough. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what is our, our score, Neil? Tarts. The score is Deva with fifty, Kells with fifty-six, and Neil with ninety-eight. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is feeling very familiar. Yeah. All right. Well, we, we're done opening presents. Let's check out what's in our stockings. So we've got the category stocking stuffers. Hey. Question one. The biggest version of this common Christmas treat was built in Geneva, Illinois by chef Elaine Robbie in 2012. It was 51 feet long, required about 900 pounds of sugar, and was eventually smashed up with a hammer so people could take home a piece. What was the treat? I'm locked in. I am uh, locked in as well. I'm locked in. All right. Neil locked in first like he does. Neil? (laughs) The only Christmas treat I could think of that would need a hammer to break it up would be a candy cane. Devo? I also said candy cane. Kells. 
I said a gingerbread oh, man. The hammer was the tip off. It is a candy cane. Question two. For many, it is a tradition to place this fruit in the toe of the stocking. Okay. What? <laughs> I am locked in. Locked in. Once again, Neil locked in first because that's what he does. Neil. <laughs> So it's kind of a vaguely worded question because different people could have different fruit that they stuff on the stocking, but I think the correct answer is going to be orange. Devo. I also said orange. Kells. I said orange. It is technically a mandarin orange, but I will take all of those answers. Question three. One origin theory of the Christmas stocking is that children would place their boots filled with carrots, straw, or sugar near the chimney for Odin's flying horse to eat. Odin would reward them with gifts of candy. What was the name of Odin's horse? Yeah, Neil. <laughs> Odin's horse. Go ahead and lock in. Let's <laughs> Don't dare him. He'll do it. We all suffer. Um, I'm locked in. I feel like this was on uh, the mythology episode. If Emily were playing, she would have already gotten yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm locked in. <laughs> I'm, I'm locked in. Uh, Devo. Well, Odin is a Norse god. The Norse gods are primarily from Scandinavia, so I said Sob. Kells. <laughs> I know this isn't right, but I said Fenrir. And Neil. I know the horse had eight legs, yeah. so I answered Spider Horse. <laughs> 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 I can't remember his name. Um, and I'm not clear about the pronunciation. I'm going to make that clear from the get-go. I think it's Slepnir. S-L-E-I-P-N-I-R. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that word. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, one second, yep. guys. Hey, Emily. Uh, what's the name of Odin's horse? Wow. Hey. Just, <laughs> just checking. Uh She's pretty and she's smart and she sleeps with you. It's weird. I know. <laughs> Isn't it great? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Another origin story of the Christmas stocking is that in the Byzantine Empire, St. Nicholas would throw these down the chimneys of poor women who couldn't afford dowries and that they would land in the stockings that were hung over the fire to dry. I'm locked in. Locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, Davo locked in first. I believe he threw coins down the chimney. Kells? I said cash money. And Neil. I believe it was dismembered feet. <laughs> uh, that wow. is dark. It's uh, St. Nicholas. Hey. <laughs> or was it Krampus? It's Christmas. <laughs> Krampus. It is coins. I think I'm also going to give full points to Kells when he says cash money. Cash Same money. thing. I'll take it. Yeah. But you want to accept you want to accept dismembered feet? No, I will not. <laughs> we are down to our last category. We've opened our presents. We've gone we through scores. our Oh, we need I'm scores. Sorry. Right. You agent of chaos. I don't normally do this. It's weird. It's new. At the end of round five, Kels has seventy six, Devo eighty, and Neil one eighteen. Not anybody's game. All right. Thanks, dude. <laughs> it's 
It's our last category. We've opened our Christmas presents. We've gone through our stockings. We're all sitting around the fire. Wish I had a fireplace. This is a fire. Um, Mm -hmm. Got a heaping mug of gravy. It's time we settle in for our favorite holiday movie. Die Hard. That's the category. (laughs) Four questions about Die Hard. Wow. Wow. I think I saw that the year it came out. Me too. So it's been a while. And not since then. (laughs) Question one. Whose pregnancy helped facilitate Bruce Willis accepting the role in Die Hard? Locked in. Locked in. As usual, Neil locked in first. I have no basis for for knowing... The answer to this so i'm pretty sure at that time or right around that time bruce willis was married to demi moore so i answered demi moore Debo. i on the other end said sybil shepherd because he was on moonlighting kells i wrote down demi moore Bruce Willis was indeed starring in Moonlighting, and Sybil Shepherd became pregnant. And they had to take an eleven-week hiatus because they did not they did not want to write it into the show. Yay! Wow. That's, a, that's a better answer. Well done. Mm-hmm. All right, question two. I'm going to struggle Let's with because I don't know how to pronounce this name. The plaza mm-hmm. that the uh, movie is set at. Uh, yes. Nakatomi, right? Nakatomi? Nakatomi. 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 Thank you. Yeah. What is the real name of Nakatomi Plaza? I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Dave will locked in first. Well, it's a subtle shift. But mainly for licensing purposes, they've changed it to Nakatomi Plaza. It was the Nintendo Plaza. <laughs> I like your logic. Neil? See? I think it was the Capitol Records building, wasn't it? Okay, I'm not even going to... No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I know. Kells. I said Angel Plaza. Huh. A sweep for me. It is Fox Plaza, home of 20th Century Fox. It was under construction at the time, and that's why they were able to totally take it over and blow stuff up, because it wasn't occupied yet. But today, it is the home of 20th Century Fox. That's cool. All right, question three in Die Hard. At 41... This was the this was the motion picture debut of this actor. Locked in. Uh, okay, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Kells, you go first. I say Reginald Vale Johnson. Who's that? He was the clearly guy. not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Devo? He he played Carl Winslow. Yeah, he was the dad on Family Matters. (laughs) Okay. I also said Reginald Vell Johnson. And Neil. The only actor I know in Die Hard besides Bruce Willis was Alan Rickman. I just... um, I I try to like you, Neil. But then... (laughs) But then you ruin right? everything for me. Right. Yeah, it's Alan Rickman. Holy crap. I, Isn't that surprising? I didn't know that. There's no way that was the first movie. Yeah, it's his very first film. In fact, he almost turned it down because he did not want his first film to be a villain in an action adventure movie like that. Or a, yeah, it is Alan Rickman. Whoa. Huh. That was a lucky guess. Yeah. Well, you've ruined Christmas, Neil. All right, question four. <laughs> That's a made up holiday anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I don't even know why we go on at this point. Our right, question for uh, 
When asked how he's doing while repairing his bleeding feet, John McClain responds with, quote, All things being equal, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Who originally said that line? I'm locked in. See, Neil locked in. Already. So, let's see. Somebody in... Sometimes you lock in because you have no freaking idea, so you just make up. Yeah, an but that's never you, you is it? Like, you always know. <laughs> I don't Spider know. horse. <laughs> Spider horse was a solid guess. I would have been fine with that if it was me answering that question. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm I'm uh, locked in. I'm locked in. All right. Neil locked in first. So I'm, I guess it was an old timey, not old timey. That's not, that sounds kind of rude. Uh, an older actor. And I went back to my standby, Spencer Tracy. Kells. I guessed it was Joe Frazier. Smoking Joe Frazier. Uh, Devo. Randall Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I swear I thought Neil had it when he said old timey. It's a famous yeah. old timey comedian, WC Fields. So, what is our score? The score after the end of regulation is Kells with 76, Devo with 90, and Neil with 128. Yep. Oh, that's cool. I got 76, and the last question was about Philadelphia. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I wanted hey. something. <laughs> Straight coincidence. Final question. We've opened our presents. We've gone through our stockings. We've watched Die Hard. We're sipping our steaming mugs of gravy. Mm. What do families do now? They sing Christmas carols. Oh. Oh. So currently, this week, on the Billboard Top 40 charts, there are 20 top Christmas songs being played nationwide. Name just 10 of them, and you have to have the name and the artist. What? Oh, uh, wait just one second, Bobble. Yes, it's your friendly podcasting fanatic. Here to shout out my trivia brothers from another mother, the Trivia Rose. When you get a chance, pop on over to the Trivia Rogues and let Billy and the gang educate you on some things, Bubba. Funk on. And do remember to please look both ways before you cross my mind, baby. I will say this. I, uh, I'm, I like Christmas music, uh, pop rock Christmas music, and I would have not have done as well in this category as I would have thought I would have. So it's a tough category. I'll start with number 20, and you just tell me if you got it. And just for fun, tell me what slot you had it in. So number 20. Oh, we're supposed to be ranking them? Wait a minute. You don't have to. I put it in order. But I'm just curious what you thought of first. In other words, not necessarily ranking. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Number 20. Christmas, Baby Please Come Home by Darlene Love. No, I don't have that one. Never heard of it. Never 19, it. Jingle Bells by Frank Sinatra. Don't have it. No. no. 18, Blue Christmas by Elvis. Number two. Oh, I forgot <laughs> Blue Christmas. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, number 17, White Christmas by Bing Crosby. Got it. Number two. Not number one. three. Dose. Neil? Yeah. Number one. Number 16, There's No Place Like Home, Home for the Holidays by Perry Como. Mm -mm. No. I would have never got it, Perry Como. I would not have gotten that one either, honestly. Uh, underneath. Know the song, but not. Underneath the, the Christmas Tree by Kelly Clarkson? Nope. Uh -uh. Number 14, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas by Perry Como. 
Mm-mm. once again. <laughs> no pericolos. You can just skip over the pericolos wow. if you want. He's kind of a Christmas <laughs> legend. All right. Here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane by Gene Autry. No. Yes, dude. Happy Holidays slash The Holiday Season by Andy Williams. No. Okay. (laughs) Apparently you guys don't like Christmas. Uh, Number 11, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Gene Autry. Got that. Number seven. Neil? No, I don't have that. Uh, Number 10, Sleigh Ride by the Ronettes. No. No. Number nine, Feliz Navidad by Jose. Oh, man. (laughs) Feliz. I didn't didn't know the the name of the (laughs) band. Who is it? Who did it? Uh, Jose, Feliciano. Jose Feliciano. Yeah. It's on my phone and everything, and I couldn't have picked it. Man. I, had to I told it. you, this is tougher than it seems. I, I would have struggled a little bit. Number eight, The Christmas Song, parentheses, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire by Nat King Cole. No. I Got feel it. like I should have, should have, but I didn't. Number, number 10. 10. Uh, number seven, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow by Dean Martin. No, oh, I got happy no. for a second because I thought you were talking about Boys to Men. <laughs> what? Boys to Men has a song called Let It Snow. It's, it's a Christmas oh. song. But then you kept adding Let It Snow. Yeah, there's there, three. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of snow. <laughs> Number six, and I presume all of you got this one. Last Christmas by Wham. No, no. Oh, I got Last Christmas by George. I'll Michael. accept that honestly, because let's oh, be honest, is, yeah. Wham was yeah. just George Michael. <laughs> I will totally accept that. <laughs> all right, number five. It's the most wonderful time of the year by Andy Williams. No. Really? Okay. Yeah, do I I have good Christmas songs written down? I got solid <laughs> ones. What number was that? That's four? number five. We're going to number four. Oh, okay. So when does grandma got run over Not by Ranger? On grandma? the list. <laughs> okay. You know what? And that gives me hope. Oh, that, was, that was my number. Elmo, Elmo and Patsy. Number four. That was my number. Number 10. four. Stay with me. <laughs> Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms. Got it. Yeah. Helms. Bobby Helms. Number nine. No. Number because th- I couldn't think of number no three. A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives. Oh, my God. oh that's not the Burl Ives song I've got. It's making my list look like I just didn't <laughs> even try, and I got some points. I feel like we're too high on the list for Christmas wrapping, by the way. Christmas yeah. Oh, Christmas <laughs> but that's solid. That's a solid entry. Uh, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee comes in at number two. Man. Huh. Nope. Okay, and just for fun, since everybody struggled, I'm going to add a bonus. <laughs> for oh, 10 additional points... Can you name the number one song currently on the Christmas top 20 on the Billboard charts? All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. All, all I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah Carey. That, that's my number one written yeah, down song. That's my first one. Um, I mean, just based on my list here, I would have to go with uh, Frosty the Snowman by Jimmy Durante. The number one Billboard chart topping Christmas single. For this week is Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. Yeah. Well done. So it's so that, that so it's plus ten on that one. So you get an extra ten points. Cause it's Christmas. Oh, I'm well, throwing out presents. Except for Neil. I'm I'm a little concerned now. 
I don't know. I think, <laughs> I, I, even with mine, um, it's still like an NBA score <laughs> blowout, though. Like it really I, is. I got, my, I got most of my points in garbage time. So me too. Me too. <laughs> so, Kels, how many did you get right? Uh, three, but my third one was a ten plus bonus, so I guess forty points. So uh, forty. Yeah. So that brings you to one sixteen. <laughs> and uh, currently in second place. <laughs> one less. Dave, Dave, how much did you get? Uh, I got four, but one of them was the bonus, so I had 50 points. So that takes you to 140, currently in first place. And I only got three right, but that does give me 158. Oh. Ah, and once again, Sensei is our winner. Well played, guys. Yeah. Out of retirement and dust. Wow. And dust. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> he didn't even warm up. Was, he didn't tape his ankles or nothing. He just came out there and killed us. I had this fantasy of him crying halfway through the Furby freebies. Instead, he just dominated like he always does. <laughs> it's like when Neo figures out, you know, becomes figure believes he's yes. the one and is just blocking those punches with no effort. Or he just flicks away the bullets that are coming towards him. He stops yeah. them and just kind of yeah. flicks yeah. them with his finger. Yeah, that's how it feels for me right now. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Neil, on a wonderful Christmas uh, walloping for well the rest played, of us. Well played, Neil. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good game. And so, from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, we would all like to wish you a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, happy Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> Kells? Well, you took almost everything I was going to say, but it doesn't matter what you celebrate this time of year. If you don't celebrate, just be safe out there. Take care of each other. Peace and love. Andy? Happy Christmas. War is over if you want it. Ladle Brainers. And Neil. As Ralphie's mom said, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> Signing off. Uh, greetings and salutations to all you good trivia people out there. I know what you're thinking. Hey, I really enjoyed this show. Uh, how can I get a little more? Well, I'm here to help you out. You can look up these good people on Twitter. At Little Brain. Or if Facebook's more your deal, you can look them up at Brain Ladle Productions. Hey, they've even got their own webpage. It's uh, BrainLadleTrivia.com. Uh, now, if you're feeling generous, you can join a Patreon, where if you donate $10 or more, you can even get yourself a fancy show invite. Now, how about that? Until we meet again, this has been 44, and I'm glad you joined us. Hope I'm out. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions, all rights reserved.